We ain't acting like we got sense today. You already know what it is. You already know what the vibes are. We don't got sense today. That's not what we doing today. That is not what we are doing today. All right? What we're going to do today is blow stuff, some stuff out of proportion. We're going to blow it out of proportion. That's what we're doing today. <laughs> Listen, it's the, it's the fourth game of the preseason. I understand it's preseason. Okay? Like practice. I understand it's preseason. But there were some important things that happened today. Okay? Now, am I going to be talking a little bit about the blockness monster returning to the middle? I don't even know. But we could talk about it. We're going to be talking about Julius Randle hitting the last second shot to win the game after a, a monumental comeback. I don't even know if that's, but we can talk about it. Are we going to talk about Grimes getting time and trying to shine? Yeah, yeah, we can talk about it. So let's talk about it in about a big 15 minutes. Welcome to the Bashir Brilliance Podcast by Sheer Brilliance. We're going to talk about the Knicks and why culture is important and why winning games in the preseason is important and why Tibbs playing starters, big minutes, why that's important. So I'm going to go in that order and I'm not going to talk in in detail about anything. I just want to make these points and hop off of here. This may be a big eight minutes today. Culture. Culture is when you see the fans supporting the team and the team supporting each other, but also giving kudos to the fans. Culture is when from the top to the very last man on the bench to the people who guard the players and protect the people in the stands when everybody's on the same page. It's something, culture's like porn. Sometimes it's difficult to describe, but you know it when you see it. That's culture. Culture is when you're watching a team in interviews And every other word they're talking about, I love this person. I love the coach. This is like a family. Culture is when fans celebrate in the fact that you just had your second son. And we hopping on there like, congratulations, congratulations. Yo, we hype for it. Culture is when the historically introverted, quietest, superstar in the league steps out takes the knee proposes to his girl on Madison Square Garden posts it and the fans get behind it that's culture culture is when it's beyond basketball and it's important and you can only get that when the fans are serious beyond basketball they're serious about their basketball So for years, if you don't know basketball and if you ain't in New York, then everybody's trying to convince you that the Nick fan is delusional and don't know what they're talking about. That the Nick fans think more of their players. You're right. You want a fan base that no matter what skill level you bring to the table, if you work hard and if you're serious and if you take with pride the jersey that you're wearing, They're going to support you, flaws and all. Wouldn't it be nice if we had people in our lives who did the same thing? But you're quick to put down a fan base that does it. Culture's important. Kudos, Leon. Kudos, World Wide West. Kudos, Tibbs. Kudos, James Dolan. Stop. 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 So I'm done with culture. All right. So we ain't going to. That's my point about culture. It's back. It's there. 
So all that stuff that KD was talking about, nah, man, you know, uh, Nick ain't cool. Uh, yo, son, just yeah. warm yourself in the heat of the blazes. That is the Barclays. Do that. All right? So culture, out of the way. Habits. Habits are established preseason, regular season, summer league, training camp, habits. Now, you're talking to a kid from the 90s, bro, and I know Nick fans, and I'll admit to this, Nick fans, I mean, we, 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 we really look favorably upon those teams in the 90s. And it could be argued, well, what did you win? You don't hang Atlantic Division banners in the rafters. You don't hang Eastern Conference banners in the rafters. Nah, you don't. But what you can hang is your hat on a team that left it all on the floor. You can hang your hat on a team that got more scars and bruises from practices from each other than they did from the opposing team. When you go to war and go to battle and practice, then your opponent is lunch. Because you've already, you've, you've already uh, battled the heat from the kitchen. And you already cooked in practice. So when it came time for somebody else to come in here, nah, that's not happening, bro. And those are the type of habits that you're hearing about. If you follow this New York Knicks team, you hear, listen, if you're not paying attention to us, that's fine. But don't be surprised when we're squeaking out wins. When you're looking at the halftime score and you see that the Knicks are down 18 and you're like, yeah, that's an L. You know what I mean? I'm going to hop on and see what the Knicks say. I'm going to see how Stephen A. Smith reacts tomorrow to a preseason game because the Knicks lost by like 18. And then you're surprised when you go to sleep or you wake up and you see that the Knicks won by two. And this is in preseason. I got news for you. Don't be surprised when that happens during the regular season. Why? Because they've practiced it. They took the game in preseason seriously. And we talk about goal setting. And I wouldn't be surprised if it was a goal to finish 4-0. The team was fighting like it was. The Wizards sat their stars to preserve them from injury. And listen, if a New York Knicks player would have got injured, we would have been, it would have been a whole different story, win or lose. But ultimately what happens is you play to the end no matter what the game says. And Derrick Rose, man, Derrick Rose, bro, there's something weird going on with this team. There's something uh, there's something in the universe going on with this team. Everything is falling in the right place. You don't get the sense. You get the sense that every player on the team is competitive, but you don't get the sense that they're cutthroat and they're not on the same page. You don't get that sense from the team. Derrick Rose, at the end of the game, he continues to try to make sure the Knicks fans know that he appreciates the second opportunity to be back in the garden, to be able to play with this team, and to be able to play in front of the fans. And I, I appreciate him so much because the Knicks fans sensed that he kind of gave up on the first time around. He get. I personally, I can't speak for all Nick fans. I felt like he gave up on us. First off, I felt that he was really like, damn, because he didn't want Chicago. I mean, he didn't want to leave Chicago. And I get that. I get it now. I was a little bit, you know, I felt a little disrespected when, you know, they had the video of him crying, you know, when he heard he got traded from Chicago. And when he got here, he went on the high ace. He did, he did a Kyrie. He just did. You know, he said, I got to be with my family, man. You know, I got some things I got to take care of, you know. You know and, and we didn't know where he was. And then the way he left, man, it was just like, yo, bro, 
be out. You know, say what say what you want, man. But it's just like, yo, not everybody could play in New York. We just admit that. We understand that. But don't be trying to put it on the fact that, all right, it could have been the culture. It could have been the leadership. It could have been the personnel. It could have been all that. But, you know, you can't separate that from, from, the, from the people of the city. And we just took that personally. But what Derek has been doing, man, is, yo, he's been on this apology tour and, and yo and we like we accepted the apology but we also appreciate the fact that you know you bring it up every now and again where it's just like yo i know you know i got some things to show i felt like i may have left some things unfinished and yo man that endears us to him so much bro so habits when he is now setting the tone knowing that he's probably still at his age, one of the most talented players on the team, one of the most skilled players on the team, the the most accomplished player on the team. But he's humble and he's setting the tone. And you got players who are coming up who have that potential who can look at a veteran player and be like, yo, you've reached levels I'm trying to reach. And he's looking back at them and saying, this is how you prepare. And Julius is doing the same thing. I'm not going to be all rah-rah because he was trying to be that when he first got here. But he's like, yo, I'm going to show you with my work. And it's not, listen, it is preseason, all right? And it is uh, Ga- Gafford or Gabbard from the Wizards who was, who's been busting our ass over the last two games that we played. He seems like a young and up-and-coming player. But that last move, everybody cleared out, man, you can't understate it. I'm a spiritual human being. I'm a believer in spiritual. I'm a believer in um, the people that come before you and the people who paved the way for you. And everything about that shot that Julius took and made said Kobe Bryant. Everything about it. Everything said purple and gold. Everything was just like, yo, I understand. That was a grasshopper moment. And it's preseason. But you still can't take away that it's an action that happened. Everything said Kobe Bryant about it. Habits. And I was going to say it a little bit earlier, so I'm going to swing back around and say it. Yo, sometimes we overrate the teams of the 90s. But one thing I absolutely remember, being a young guy, Growing up in the 90s, watching Patrick Ewing, watching Charles Oakley, John Starks. Patrick Ewing was the most talented player on that team, and he didn't have talented players around him. He just had players who was willing to work harder than the next team, who weren't willing to back down. Principles, that if you were a team, a a fan of that team, you adopted it in your own life, in your real life. The discipline, the working out, working harder than the next person, trying to have enough stamina to even out last. And no matter what, you can be better than me, you can be talented than me, but you're not going to outwork me. And that was the spirit, and it continues to be the spirit of New York. And that is what we're seeing in this team. Down 18, down 15, down 18, down 9, down 6. Down 12, down to the last 40 minutes, 48 minutes to the game. And then we take our first lead of the night. And I couldn't turn away because I felt like this game isn't going to be over until the final buzzer. And we were right. And that's bad news for the league. Because what it means is this team believes when nobody else does. This team has something that they've been fed and they've consumed and they uh, as part of their belief system. You are not going to outlast us. And when Pat, Pat Riley set those habits early on, man, there's no stopping. There's no stopping when you have a superstar who... Sets habits. Sorry about that. When you have your superstar 
who sets the tone, or you have some veteran, respected veteran players who set the tone. Listen, man, you can't beat that. It's about habits. All right? So we're excited about this win. 4-0, yo, it says a lot. It's going into the season, making winning and habit. That's what Riley used to always say. Don't get accustomed to losing. Don't think we're just going to sit this out. You know, we could beat this team and we're going to bring it back. And we're going to come back and beat them the next time. Nah, every win matters. And Derrick Rose, once again, put another notch under his belt in collecting New York Knicks fans when he said that. He said, all this shit matters. The interview when they was just like it's preseason, you know the crowd is jumping, and listen, you got Floyd Mayweather on the Mayweather on the on, on the uh, baseline, and you got this, and you hear the crowd, you know what do you think? He said all this shit matters because it's the habits that you form every game that'll make a difference in game 81, 82. It's going to make a difference in that game five or game six of the playoffs, and hopefully further. So right now, clap your hands, everybody, if you got what it takes. Because we're the New York Knicks and we're on the rise and everybody else is on the brakes. We here. And we got next. I'm out.